Hi everyone, this is Laura from Watch Laura Sew, and today we are going to be free motion quilting this table runner in front of me. It is a large table runner, but super duper cute. It is a cute one. It is part of my fall collection, and it is some fabric that I've actually had for a lot of years, but it just seems like I had all the right fabric this year in order to do this uh, table runner. So I'm going to show it to you really quickly, and then we're going to get started on free motion quilting. This particular one that we're going to free motion quilt is going to be three different wreaths going across. And in the center, I'm just doing a basic uh, intersecting leaves uh, just to make it kind of simple and to get going on it so that it can get done. I thought about doing little pumpkins but I'm not sure that I think it would be overdoing the pumpkin theme. Okay, so this is the table runner that I'm going to do. And it's just got cute, cute things. Like there's a little owl with the squirrel. And then I've got a scarecrow. So what I'm going to do is I have the nine. I have three of these nine blocks. And... On each one, I'm going to do a wreath. So I'll put the center here, and then I do the wreath going around with a feather. And in this case, I think I'm going to do just kind of a nice loop so there's no backtracking on it and on the feather. And it will be really pretty. So I'm going to get going. I'm going to put the camera up here so you can see a little bit better. And as always, we're going to put our feed dogs down. Stitch length to zero. And I have, I'm going to put my quilting foot on. I use an open toe quilting foot. I'm going to go ahead and get that on. I'm going to change out my thread. And I will lift this up as well. So I lift my presser foot up, the pressure, I put it all the way to the top. I'm gonna turn this around this time. A lot of times I don't personally do that, but if you wanna have full view of what you're doing, this is the way to do it. And I always lift up the foot and then re position everything because I don't mind twirling it and then lifting the foot that's fine too which is what I just did or keep the foot up so that you can twirl it even better that way you don't have let me check that foot it's on there solid but when the way it went down I thought maybe it wasn't all right so I'm going to come back and just like this just a nice simple leaf and I have a video that I did a couple years ago on meandering leaves that is a good one to look at if you want to see how to make a leaf and I think they're one of the easier things to do when you're starting at free motion quilting in fact I recommend starting with leaves before starting with stippling or anything that has a major curve to it. So, uh, because people start with stippling so much of the time and then they get eyelashing on the back and it's so frustrating and I think it's so much better to start with meandering lines, just a nice simple back and forth. And it's something that you can use on a quilt and I use it so many times today even so all right so i have those uh tutorials uh on my youtube channel and you can just uh, look at it uh, if you look up my youtube channel then you can see that there's a whole there's a whole section for some basic quilting designs and it's just what I think that works to get started at free motion quilting. And I did it a couple of years ago and I hope that it's useful to people. So uh, you can check it out. I have a link up above for that. 
I think that thread would work out just fine. We're going to go ahead and use it and then go ahead and do this particular wreath. I'm going to speed up the video and add some music for you and we will get this table runner done and I will show it to you at the very end with the binding on it. Now I have the question of how many plumes can I put in here? And I have from this space right here to here. And if I put two in there, they're two very big ones, but is it any different than the rest of them? So if I go over here, I measure this. Let's measure it with it comes out to about an inch and a quarter, a little bit over. So if I look at my space here, it's almost three inches. So it would be a little bit big, but it could be done to do two in here. And the same thing over here. So I'm going to go ahead and try two. And they might be a little bit big and so We'll have to see how it goes. I really don't want to take it out, so I'm going to see. But that means that one of them, my going on this side as I come up, I'm going to have to pretty much get in this area. So the plume has to come up and around. So let's see how it goes. I'm going to go ahead and turn it like this so I can see a little bit better and I'm going to go ahead. And I don't like the shape of that one. No. So I kind of regret doing that. I don't like the shape of it at all. I came at it a little bit wrong. So I am actually going to take that out. I think I'm going to do three. All right, so let's take this out. Sometimes you just have to take it out. And I'm going to do it carefully so that I can put, uh, I can knot this. So I'm going to go ahead and break it in here. I'll show you how I do this. I'm going to go ahead and break it in here. Probably around there. I need to be able to knot it and then tuck it. I'm going to do that. I had some little stitches in here. And then we'll just very carefully do one stitch at a time. I didn't want that to happen. See how that happened? I want a nice clean thread. So the way you get that is you pull on it and then you do one stitch at a time. Just like that. See, I go underneath here. And I pull out like that. Can you see that? I don't know if it's clear. Just one stitch at a time because I need to get as much uh, thread as possible so that I can tuck it, knot and tuck it. And the more it's frayed like that, the harder it is to put on a needle. Well, you could do self-threading needles, but I don't have any right now, which would be nice. So there we go. And this is how I do it, especially if I want to 
be able to tuck the thread. And I'm probably going to do this before I go any further so that it's all done and it's not sitting out there for me to remember to do. I like to take care of it right away. So we're going to go ahead and hopefully you can see. So these are the things that can slow you down is when you make a decision and then you don't execute it very well. And I could not let that be in the center of this table runner. <laughs> this is, you know, something that somebody might put on their Thanksgiving table. And the last thing I want is for a kind of a uh, something I didn't intend. So we're gonna make it perfect and we're gonna make it right. So uh, knotting the thread and tucking it is a, a totally acceptable way of handling this. And I will actually probably run it along on the inside for a little bit. And, and I do that in the batting as I tuck it. All right, it is doubled over right there. So I'm going to go with that and then I'll knot and tuck this. I'm going to take the rest of this out and I will catch you when I finished here. I went ahead and took out this right here. And now we're going to start again. And this time we're going to take do three plumes and it'll look a lot better. And I should have done that in the beginning. Everything has been knotted. It's been tucked. All threads are, are th all threads are knotted and all threads are tucked in this area. So we're going to just go ahead and get started again. And in fact, that one thread actually was doubled over. So, all right. Okay, so now we're going to do it again. <laughs> it was just too big a space and it just didn't look right. So we'll do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and finish all the other two uh, sections. And then we'll, we'll come back after I do this inner border and I will show you the outer border that I'm going to do for it. All right, I will see you a little bit later and I'll see you at the outer border. So where we left off before I finished the three uh, wreaths that would be on this particular table runner. And I also did the inner border. So here we go. We're going to get started on this particular quilting motif for the outer border. It is going to be a single sided feather. It will help balance all of the quilting of the table runner. That is why I'm doing it. A lot of times on the outer and inner borders, I don't put a lot in there. Uh, in this particular case, I did put some leaves here. A couple of reasons why I'm doing that is because with the quilting that I had in the center part, which was the uh, the leaves going outward, but also with a feather going around, it is a lot of quilting in this area. And so I was worried about the balance of the table runner. So because of that, that is one reason I did extra in the inner border and I'm doing also an extra kind of a more difficult type of quilting motif that I'm putting on the outer border. So whoever gets this particular table runner, they're getting kind of an upgraded table runner by, you know, the choices that I'm putting into it. All right, so let's get started. This is a fun one to do. It's going to take me a little bit of time. I'll speed it up and add some music and hopefully that you'll have a good time with it.
I'll show you the whole thing, how it looks with the fabric still on it. I'm going to cut this off and then put the binding on. So, and let me go ahead and show it to you. I'll show you. I'll move it over to the table. So this is what it looks like when it is complete. And you can see there are, this is this, I still have all the threads on and all the excess fabric. So here's the middle of the, this particular nine block. And then you will see the feathering going around. So I have three of those. I have this one and then this one with the nine and then this one with the nine. So that's what it looks like. And then I have, nothing's pressed or anything. It just came off the sewing machine. So with the mini leaves going through here, just a meandering mini leaf, and then with the feathering. So I'm gonna flip it over and we'll see it together. Then I will go ahead and put the binding on. And once I put the binding on, I'll show you the final pictures. So this is what it looks like from the other side. So you can see the, I'll use the center one as the one. So you can see the center of the block and then moving out to see kind of the circle, the circle of the feathering and then moving out to see the border, the inner border, and then the outer border. And once I go ahead and put the binding on, it'll look even more defined. So I am really happy with it. It looks really fantastic. This was actually quite a bit of work but it just lent itself to this design. And I think it'll be a lot of fun for someone. I really like it a lot. I think that it's awfully cute. It's, it's got adorable fabric on it. And I think it's a lot of fun. It would be a lot of fun for a Thanksgiving uh, table or just a fall celebrating fall dining room table or coffee table and I think they would be lovely. So I'll put the binding on, and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. And I will see you next time at the sewing machine. Have a great day, bye bye.